this is a list of women philosophers, scientists, leaders, rulers, artists, and warriors throughout history, before and after the rise of patriarchal monotheistic religions, up to and including modern day, the records of which have survived in spite of rigorous attempts to erase many of their accomplishments from memory. All of these women, including many that are not yet listed, are legendary and invaluable to the progress of humanity in their own right. The Malleus Maleficarum was not an isolated event that is relegated solely to the past. Its likeness can be seen in varying degrees depending upon region in the world today. How many women were silenced or outright murdered for their works besides the ones on this list, thereby stemming not only women's contribution to our species, but humanity's progress as a whole? All the information provided here is supported by extensive historical documentation, the sources of which can be found by following the link in the description of this video, which will lead to the lengthier version of this compilation. That list will never be complete, and as such, I will continue to add to it and adjust it as best as I am able. Each of the women I have added to this list provide something to humanity as a whole that had not been there before. That is my general basis for choosing, as I see them the best. Not just the best of their region, or even the best of their gender, but the best of all time. Please aid me in this ever-ending quest by providing examples of women that I have missed or have not yet found myself. I may or may not add them immediately upon suggestion, so feel free to write about them in the comment section. These are the women that I feel are most noteworthy. Ein Hedu Ana. A thousand years before Pythagoras, the so-called father of philosophy, the moon high priestess of the ancient Akkadian Empire, also known as Babylon, which is modern-day Syria, Iraq, was doing philosophy. She definitively wrote 42 hymns known as the Sumerian Temple Hymns that are regarded as the first systemic theology. She was also an early mathematician, governess, and astronomer. Her lifespan was 2285 to 2250 before the Common Era. Aspasia of Miletus, Greek rhetorician or orator public speaker, was named by Socrates as his teacher of rhetoric. She was further recognized and honored for her craft by Plato, Xenophon, Athenaeus, Pericles, and Cicero. Cicero in particular wrote a chapter on argumentation that he based on Aspasia's lessons of induction. Her speechcraft was viewed as thoroughly important to philosophers and statesmen because of the need to effectively communicate their intent. It was taught that belief and truth were not alike, and therefore rhetoric had the potential to deviate from the truth and be deceitful to the audience, or enlighten them as the orator saw fit. Understanding the craft was therefore important to both teach and to not be deceived. 470 to 400 before Common Era. Cleopatra the Seventh Philopata, descendant of the Ptolemies, who was a late general to Alexander of Macedonia, also known as Alexander the Great, she was a renowned stateswoman, beloved Egyptian leader and consort to two of the most brilliant Roman generals of their time. She first convinced Gaius Julius Caesar to support her in her civil war for Egypt between herself and her siblings. With Rome's backing, Cleopatra brought an end to her sister and child brother husband King. Further, she had a son by Caesar, hoping the boy would allow her access into the elite of Roman society. However, with Caesar's assassination, her claim was ruled illegitimate. She saw another opportunity in the power struggle between the beloved general and famed orator Mark Antony and the man made Caesar's son by will, Gaius Octavian, later known as Augustus. Cleopatra and Mark Antony's love affair is legendary. So too is their death. Theirs is the most famous romance in history. Octavian manages to turn the love of the Roman people against Antony by proclaiming Antony had lost his Roman way to the foul enchantress, Cleopatra. Open war followed. At the Battle of Attium, Cleopatra took fright and fled, taking sixty warships with her. Antony, though beloved by his soldiers as a legendary warrior and veteran of countless battles, is heartbroken to be abandoned by the woman he saw as his soulmate in his most perfect time of need. Antony leaped into the water and swam after Cleopatra, deserting his army and armada. Now on the verge of defeat, the two retreat to Alexandria to await the end. Perhaps as part of a pact with Octavian, Cleopatra tricks Antony into thinking her dead, and in grief, Antony kills himself with a gladius sword. Finding that Octavian only wanted her alive to be paraded in chains, Cleopatra famously committed suicide on her throne by an asp snake next to the armor-clad body 
of Mark Antony, 51 to 30 before the Common Era. Boudica of the British Iceni tribe, she is renowned for swearing and then reaping vengeance on the Roman Empire. After being betrayed by Rome, having her land annexed, being publicly flogged, and having her daughters raped, Boudica was uh, irate. She demonstrated her dissatisfaction by leading a vicious rebellion against Roman rule in Britain. Under her leadership, the rebel forces destroyed Camille Dunum, which is modern-day Colchester, and defeated the forces sent by Cadus Desanius to thwart them. Boudica led from her chariot, her daughters beside her at all times. Boudica's army then defeated a Roman legion, the Ninth Hispana, under General Quintus Petilius Cerealis, likewise unsuccessfully sent to quell the rebellion. The Roman general Gaius Suetonius Polanius, fearful of the rushing odds moving toward him, abandoned Londinium, modern London, leaving it to be burned to the ground. Next followed the sacking of Verulanium, modern St. Albans. An estimated 70 to 80,000 civilians were butchered in brutal fashion in these cities by Boudicca's army. Suetonius, however, was not wasting time, and despite the Emperor Nero's impulse to abandon Britain entirely, Suetonius regrouped and led his outnumbered Roman legions to victory against Boudicca's disorganized rebels. This resulted in her suicide in lieu of capture. Boudicca is honored for her ruthlessness in vanquishing invaders, with a statue on the Thames at Westminster Bridge opposite Big Ben. 30 to 61 Common Era. Septima Zenobia was a Syrian warrior queen who, with the help of nine other martial queens of the region, repeatedly defeated Roman invasion and conquered strategic Roman territories in order to enhance her own Palmyrene Empire. She reportedly marched with and fought alongside her foot soldiers. She is well known for leading the charges into battle, her femininity being viewed by the time as the personification of any number of goddesses and gave heart to her troops. She conquered Egypt expelling a Roman general in the process, then later killing him when he returned in force. Zenobia claimed to be descended from both Cleopatra and Dido of Carthage, while simultaneously proclaiming herself the new Queen of Egypt. Besides conquering territory, she was a renowned stateswoman, inviting many prominent scholars into her queendom. When she was finally defeated, she was made to participate as part of a triumph as a means of humiliation. Unlike her supposed ancestors, however, Zenobia profited from the respect she garnered fighting Roman rule and bargained to be given a villa in Italy's Tivoli, eventually marrying a Roman senator and becoming a well-respected socialite. Her bloodline, too, was highly valued by Roman aristocracy long after her natural death, 240 to 274 Common Era. Hypatia, a Greek mathematician, philosopher, inventor, astronomer, and teacher, she was the head of the Platonist school in Roman Alexandria. She wrote numerous volumes charting celestial bodies and invented the hydrometer, used to determine relative density or specific gravity of liquids. She was tortured and killed by a Christian mob on charges of witchcraft. This, at the fall of Roman secular thought and the rise of patriarchal monotheistic theology. After the murder of Hypatia, the stature of women was significantly diminished. Kathleen Wider proposes that the murder of Hypatia marked the end of classical antiquity, and Stephen Greenblatt observes that her murder effectively marked the downfall of Alexandrian intellectual life. Supporting these assertions is the fact that no more mathematical advancements would be made in the Western world for the next 1,200 years. The Chinese and the Arab civilizations continue to move forward in this science. 350 to 370 Common Era. Mavia also of Syrian descent, this martial queen is often compared to Zenobia. She, too, fought an effective war against the Roman Empire, likewise personally leading her armies into battle. However, unlike her predecessor, she never lost. Even after Roman generals received considerable reinforcements in the form of the Roman commander of the East himself. Instead, Rome lost repeatedly in battle to her, and unlike in the time of Zenobia, the Romans had no allies to call upon, and so capitulated to Mavia's considerable demands, and Mavia and Rome became allies once more. Later, Rome remembered the devastating effectiveness of Mavia's forces and asked for her assistance in their war with the Goths. 375 to 425 Common Era. Hildgard of Bingen, a German abbess, Christian saint, musician, composer, mystic philosopher, and writer of several texts, including medical works, Hildegard left behind over 100 letters, 72 songs, 70 poems, and 9 books. 
Aside from her renowned musical works and controversial visions, Hildegard proposed a heliocentric universe 300 years before Copernicus and wrote of universal gravitation 500 years before Newton. Her then outrageous theories were not recognized, however, she being just a nun, a woman. 1098 to 1179 common. Yin Wing Chun, a Chinese legend and founder of the martial arts style Wing Chun, literally translated to Eternal Spring, a style famously used by Chinese war hero Yip Man, martial teacher of the Hollywood star Bruce Lee. Yin Wing Chun was saved from sexual assault by a passing Shaolin monk, Wu Mei, her supple woman, who was one of the legendary five elders of the Shaolin before the destruction of their temples by the government. Wu Mei taught her Gung Fu, allowing Yim to construct her own martial style, which was popularized by Bruce Lee. That style is Wing Chun. Joan of Arc, French national heroine and Christian warrior saint, a peasant girl who garnered great acclaim through her divinely inspired visions and martial bravery. Joan led the French army to many victories against their English occupiers in the Hundred Years' War. Joan is categorized as a fearless leader, able to inspire her soldiers with both words and acts of valor, including continuing battle even after multiple serious injuries. She was captured, tortured, including rape, and executed by fire by English church officials in violations of many legal statutes of the day. Her body was burned multiple times more to reduce it to ashes. Twenty-five years after, she was deemed innocent, declared a martyr, and canonized. She's a renowned historical icon, with many people of import throughout history mentioning her as inspiration, including Napoleon. Countless renowned artists and poets wrote extensively about her life and deeds, including William Shakespeare, Voltaire, Pyotr Ilyich Tchaikovsky, and Mark Twain. 1412-1431, Common Era. Augusta Ada Lovelace, an English countess and mathematician, the next great student of that science after Hypatia of Alexandria. She created what is considered the first algorithm ever, specifically tailored for implementation on a computer. For this reason, Ada is often cited as the first computer programmer. She created the computation to operate Charles Babbage's early mechanical general purpose analytical engine. Further, unlike Babbage, who only focused on the device's ability to number crunch, Lovelace foresaw and predicted the capability of computers to go far beyond just those tasks, and wrote a paper outlining the potential for the development of computer software, artificial intelligence, and computer music. The computer language Ada, created by the United States DOD, was named after Ada Lovelace and is categorized by the date of her birth. Further, several awards in computer science and initiatives to intellectually uplift women bear her name. 1815 to 1852, Common Era. Q Jin, a militant revolutionary for women's rights, author that encouraged the shedding of archaic and oppressive traditions, Kadokin judo martial artist, feminist poet, cross-dresser, and a member of the triads working towards the overthrow of the Qing dynasty. She secretly ran classes training women of the local underground chapters in military tactics. She carried a sword in public and dressed as a Western man to openly venerate Mulan and her martial background. The revolutionary plans failed when her cousin and his cadre of rebel police officers, also part of the planned uprising, were captured and tortured for information by the government. Knowing their plans had failed, Qiu Jin and her followers opted to stay and fight, and were overwhelmed, captured, tortured, and executed. Their deaths brought public attention to the inequities and brutality of the Qing dynasty. Ever the wandering swordsman, Qiu Jin's final act was a silent indictment of all those who did not rise up against their oppressor. To China's revolutionary students, she was an icon, a saint, and an inspiration for several films and much literature following the stories of sword maidens. The People's Republic of China honors her with the monument of the martyr Qiu Jin, 1875-1907, Common Era. Mary Edwards Walker Nowhere is the distinction of gender roles more sharply drawn than in the question of armed combat. Walker was an army surgeon during the American Civil War and another example of men forgetting the accomplishments of the women of the past and reacting with disbelief when they meet the challenge, then punishing her for playing their game better than the boys. She was the first woman to be commissioned by her country for her work and the only woman to receive the Medal of Honor by recommendation from Generals Thomas and Sherman. After she endured captivity, Walker was awarded the medal by her president, Andrew Jackson, on grounds that she, quote, has devoted herself with much patriotic zeal to the sick and wounded soldiers, both in the fields and hospitals, to the detriment of her own health, 
and has also endured hardships as a prisoner of war, end quote. American Congress later rescinded her award of the medal, however, on grounds that she did not fight in a combat unit. And indeed, to this day, American women are prohibited from fighting in combat units, although many do just that, being in war zones. Further, it is estimated that at least 500 women did the same in disguise during the American Civil War alone. President Jimmy Carter reinstated Walker's Medal of Honor, recognizing her, quote, distinguished gallantry, self-sacrifice, patriotism, dedication, and unflinching loyalty to her country, despite the apparent discrimination because of her sex, end quote. 1832 to 1919, Common Era. Amelie Emmy Noether, German mathematician and physicist, known for her legendary contributions to mathematics and physics. In maths, she revolutionized abstract algebra. In physics, she is famous for her theoretical work, specifically Noether's theorem. Described by Albert Einstein and many other renowned scientists as the most important woman in the history of mathematics, her work is hailed as guiding the development of modern physics. Noether fought fiercely to be recognized in her field while facing intense gender prejudice. Being of Jewish heritage and with the rise of the Nazi party, she moved to the United States to continue her work. Though she eventually succeeded in being recognized for her work, though never promoted to full professor status, it begs the question how much effort was used just to be heard, and how many other women were not so fortunate. Truly, she was a benefit to her country and to all of humanity. 1882 to 1935, common. Marie Sklodowska Curie, Polish physicist and chemist, first person, woman or man, to win two Nobel Prizes for her work in radioactivity. Her work with the theory of radioactivity, the concepts of conservation of energy, and techniques for isolating isotopes, as well as being the first to use them to treat tumors, places her forever in the annals of the greatest personages of human history. She discovered the elements polonium and radium. Despite the risks associated with experimentation of radiation, since radiation shielding equipment had not yet been invented, she continued her dangerous work and as a result died of radiation exposure. Curie had a monumental impact on the 20th and 21st centuries. Curie's work shook the foundations of both the scientific community and social axioms of the day. Her discovery of radium fundamentally enhanced mankind's ability to interact with the world, reconstructing her understanding of physics and allowing the mapping of the structures of the atom and medically leading to means of combating cancer. Socially, she is considered a feminist precursor, having overcome barriers imposed by her society in regards to her gender. Further, though of modest means, she was a philanthropist, giving away her Nobel money to fellow scientists and friends and refusing to patent the radium isolation process so that the scientific community could continue the research unhindered. Albert Einstein once commented that she was the only person not corrupted by fame. 1867 to 1937, Common Era. Zina Partnova, Russian partisan responsible for the deaths of over 100 Nazi soldiers through sabotage, infiltration, assassination, and gunfights. Part of a children's branch of the resistance, she belonged to the Young Avengers. She famously poisoned herself in order to maintain her cover in one such operation, falling severely ill afterwards. Partnova was captured and tortured to death without revealing any of the information she held about the resistance fighters. She was proclaimed the hero of the Soviet Union, the highest distinction in the USSR, as well as posthumously awarded the Order of Lenin. Two monuments and an obelisk are erected in her honor. 1926 to 1944, common error. Violette Zabot, French-British Special Operations Executive, SOE, spy and assassin. After being airdropped into enemy territory, she led French resistance fighters, the Maquis, in sabotage, assassinations, intelligence gathering, and painting targets for Allied bombings. She's personally responsible for assassination of several high-profile SS officers and collaborators. Sabo also personally sabotaged a Nazi fuel refinery, several railways, and communications during the Normandy invasion. After a gunfight in which she killed several SS soldiers, she was captured, tortured, and executed in the concentration camp Ravensburg, where over 92,000 women died. Denise Bloch, Cicely Lefort, and Lillian Rolfe were also SOE deep cover operatives executed by firing squad in Ravensburg. Before her execution, Zabo managed to assist in the escape of the Allied war heroine Hortensa Clues. Zabo was posthumously decorated by both Britain and France. 1921 to 1945, Common Era. Rosa Shanina, Soviet sniper with 54 confirmed kills, including 12 enemy snipers. 
She also personally captured three enemy soldiers. Unlike many conscripts in the Soviet army who were threatened with the deaths of their family in order to make them fight the much better equipped Nazis, Shanina volunteered for the front lines. Graduating from the Sniper Academy with honors, Shanina was renowned for her ability to quick shoot two targets or double hit with a lever action rifle. The Soviet Union deployed numerous female snipers because of superiorly flexible limbs and a belief that they were both more patient and cunning than their male counterparts. Women were also thought to be more resilient under combat stress than men and more resistant to cold climate exposure. Shanina refused orders to be transferred to safety. She was offered this on account of her hero status and instead died, along with the other less renowned women of her command, while protecting a heavily wounded artillery commander while 72 of 78 of her battalion were already killed in combat action during the East Prussian offensive. She herself was at that time a squad commander. Shanina was hailed as the unseen terror of East Prussia and became the first Soviet female sniper to be awarded the Order of Glory, the highest of her multiple awards. According to a medic, her last words were in regret to having, quote, done so little. 1924 to 1945, Common Era. Ludmila Pavlachenko, a Soviet sniper with 309 confirmed kills, including 36 enemy snipers, is considered the most successful female sniper in history. Like Rosa Shanina, Pavlachenko volunteered for the front lines in a rifle unit. After her combat deployment, she was received as a dignitary to the White House by Franklin Roosevelt in her diplomatic role to Canada and the United States. Major Pavlachenko was awarded the title of Hero of the Soviet Union. In addition, an American song was made in her honor. She died of natural causes. 1916 to 1974, Common Era. Elizabeth Lee Hazen, an American microbiologist who, in conjunction with Rachel Fuller Brown, created the antifungal drug Nystin, the first such drug safe for human use. It was used to cure many disfiguring fungal infections, as well as balance the effects of many previously unstable antibacterial drugs. In addition to human ailments, the drug is now used to treat such problems as Dutch elm disease and to restore water-damaged artwork from the effects of mold. The two scientists donated the royalties from their patented invention, over $13 million, to a non-profit research group for the advancement of academic scientific study. 1885 to 1975, Common Era. Cecilia Payne Gopshkin, a scientist who discovered what the universe is made of, mainly hydrogen, with the use of spectral emission lines. History is silent on her discovery, and no plaque commemorates her achievements, the credit instead going to one of her superiors, Henry Norris Russell, who himself admits to using her work. Not content with uncovering the stuff of the universe, she then took to studying variable stars, making over 3,250,000 viable observations that were later used to determine the paths of stellar evolution. 1900 to 1979, Common Era. Maria Gopert Mayer, German-American physicist, second in eminence only to Marie Curie herself. She won the Nobel Prize for proposing the nuclear shell model of the atomic nucleus. Further, she worked out the theory of the two-photon absorption by atoms, not possible in practice until the invention of the laser. An award in her name was established to honor young female physicists. 1906-1972, com. Barbara McClintock, an American cryogenicist and botanist who received the Nobel Prize for the discovery of genetic transposition, which is the ability to not only map chromosomes within an active host, but to change them at the genome level. A leader in her field, she heralded groundbreaking discoveries including genetic recombination, a system by which chromosomes exchange information. She then produced genetic maps of her work to better demonstrate the regions responsible for the keeping of genetic information and the manipulation of physical traits. She is, in other words, responsible for the ability to not only map the human genome, but also manipulate cells on a genetic level. Her accomplishments, reached as they were despite intense gender prejudice, are documented in the biographical work by Evelyn Keller. 1902 to 1992, Common Era. Dorothy Crawford Hodgkin, British chemist awarded Nobel Prize for the development of protein crystallography, which led to the mapping of three-dimensional structures of biomolecules. Hodgkin used x-rays to find the structural layouts of atoms and the overall molecular shape of over 100 molecules, including penicillin, vitamin B12, vitamin D, and insulin. Her technique became a widely used tool and was critical in later determining the structures of many biological molecules, where knowledge of structure is critical to the understanding of function. 1910 to 1994, Common Era. 
Rosalind Franklin, a British biophysicist and X-ray crystallographer, in continuing the work of Dorothy Hodgkins, who made groundbreaking discoveries in DNA, RNA, and virology, including polio. Her work revolutionized her understanding of genetics. Franklin's groundbreaking work was then showed to Watson and Crick without her permission by a jealous colleague, Maurice Wilkins. Franklin's work was what enabled Watson and Crick to publish their theory before her. Even now, she's barely credited for her contribution to science, though Watson himself admitted to stealing her work. She died, missing out on a Nobel Prize that Watson, Crick, and Wilkins received for a theory based on her work. Anne Syrie's book on Franklin's work is cited as an exposition of the rampant sexism in science. 1920-1958, Common Era. Gertrude B. Elian, American biochemist and pharmacologist. She received the Nobel Prize for Medicine. Her list of groundbreaking inventions is large indeed, having invented 6-mercaptopurine, the first treatment for leukemia. She also invented azathioprine, the first immunosuppressive agent for organ transplants. Further, she invented pyrimethamine for the treatment of malaria, used to kill parasitic infections. She also invented trimethoprim for the treatment of meningitis, septicema, and urinary and respiratory bacterial infection. Elian invented allopurinol for the treatment of gout. And finally, she invented acyclovir for the treatment of viral herpes. Her research would later lead to the development of acidothymidine, an AIDS treatment. She was the first woman to be inducted into the National Adventurous Hall of Fame, 1918-1999, Common Era. Irina Sendler, Polish nurse whose heroism and sacrifice saved the lives of over 2,500 children and infants during the Holocaust. She secreted Jewish children out of the Warsaw ghettos, in which roughly 300,000 people were murdered at the hands of their oppressors, and thousands died from disease on a monthly basis. Irina established fake identities for the children and kept their original records buried in jars, which at the end of the genocide would be recovered and used to reunite countless families with their children. The majority of the family members, however, had been exterminated. Sandler was eventually arrested on suspicion of working with the underground and brutally tortured. Her arms, legs, and feet broken, she was relegated to crutches for the rest of her life, but amazingly continued her work for the resistance and then faced yet more hardships during the following communist occupation. Among her many post-war awards, Irina Sendler was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize, 1910-2008. to 2008. Rita Levi Montalcini, Italian neurologist who received the Nobel Prize for the discovery of the nerve growth factor, a protein allowing the repair and maintenance of neurons, nerve cells. At the age of 97, now 104, she was appointed Senator for Life by the President of the Italian Republic. As recently as 2006, she has suffered verbal assaults for both her gender and Jewish heritage, 1909 to present. Stephanie Kolek. This American scientist is especially for the knuckle-draggers who claim women's contributions have been negligible. She is the chemist who invented polyparaphenylene terephthalamide, Kevlar weave, used in a wide assortment of modern-day military gear. Stephanie Kolek's research with high-performance chemical compounds led to the development of the synthetic material, which is five times stronger than the same weight of steel. Kevlar does not rust nor corrode and is extremely lightweight. Many police officers and combat soldiers owe our lives to Stephanie Kolek, since Kevlar is the material used in the creation of bulletproof vests. Other applications for the compound include underwater cables, brake linings, space vehicles, boats, parachutes, skis, and general building materials. 1923 to present. Jocelyn Bell Burnell, British astrophysicist best known for the discovery of pulsars. Dr. Josef Sklovsky was quoted saying, Miss Bell, you have made the greatest astronomical discovery of the 20th century. Like many women on this list, and many more we will never know of because of gender discrimination, Burnell's work was taken credit for by her male supervisor, Anthony Hewish. Because of this misaccreditation, Hewish received the Nobel Prize for this discovery instead of Burnell, despite well-known facts that Burnell was behind the work, her even having to convince Hewish of the existence of Pulsar in the first place, in the face of strong skepticism and ridicule. 1943 to the present. Randis Lisa at Schul, American toy maker turned millionaire inventor who conceived of the idea of a super thin, less than half a centimeter thick circuitry disposable cell phone. The credit card side disposable cell phone made of recycled paper is marketed as a way of replacing both prepaid phone cards and phone booths. 
at Shul also created a programmable debit card and paper laptop computer, which will sell for $20 and serve as an Internet access device. The technology has opened up the potential for creating a multitude of new electronic products and countless cheaper versions of pre-existing electronic tools. This technology should be considered a milestone in electronic innovation. 1961 to the present. Corporal S., IDF soldier at the Israeli-Egyptian border whose identity is hidden due to the very recent nature of this event. This is an example of all women of war and law enforcement who continue the feminine tradition of placing their lives at risk, taking the lives of their enemies, and saving the lives of their comrades throughout history and into this modern day. This is but an example I've chosen as an illustration for all the others. In the case of Corporal S., her unit was ambushed and soldiers died while others hid in fear. S. saw Nathaniel Yahalomi killed in front of her. She persevered and returned fire, killing enemy combatants and dragging another wounded comrade, Mati Olovsky, to cover, saving his life, and then holding her position against enemy forces until reinforcements arrived. 2012 to the present. Historically, and depending upon region, warrior women were part and parcel in the same way that the worship of female deities was. The rise in patriarchal admiration via one male god religions resulted in the suppression of both. In more recent history, women have always served as support personnel, but I've only taken part in combat if the country itself was in dire straits, literally requiring every single resource, even though women have proven formidable combatants. This clearly demonstrates that misogyny is a luxury. The only country thus far in modern times to break the mold is not Russia in World War II as they sent the women back to the kitchens after the combat was done, not Israel, since they're arguably in dire straits all the time, but Australia, which under the guidance of Prime Minister Julia Gillard recently lifted all gender sanctions for the military, and while at war right now themselves, do not have their homeland at any immediate danger, making the decision to move to true affirmation of women's abilities. In the 19th century, the Fawn of Dahomey were a military collective of 6,000 warrior women, reminiscent of the semi-mythical Amazons of legend. Yet they exist today as no more than footnotes in history. For 200 years, they were the vanguard against colonial invaders, putting the fear of woman into the best the French legions had to offer. The Onibugisha were Japanese female warriors of legendary combat prowess in sword, spear, horseback riding, and archery, as well as the literary arts and statescraft skill. They have been historically overshadowed by the more numerous and corrupt samurai caste. One squad of Onibugisha were said to equal three of that comprised by male fighters due to their vicious approach to combat. Their existence in Japanese culture led to women's rights to inherit and bequeath property. Prominent Onibugisha were the Empress Jingu, Tomei Ogozen, Hoja Masako, and Nakano Tokiko. Their influence diminished significantly as Japan switched from war to bureaucracy, and the role of women once more became restricted to childbearing. Misogyny is a luxury. Darda are a modern-day, secretive, all-female warrior enclave that has cropped up in the Carpathian Mountains in the wake of sexual violence and slave trafficking in the Ukraine. The group formed in an effort to empower and educate young Ukrainian women. The Asgarda girls are taught skills that range from martial arts, weapons training, and public speaking to traditional Ukrainian customs like folk dancing and embroidery. Quote, I joined the Asgarda because I wanted to protect myself. Then I saw that I was developing in confidence and becoming a strong woman, and I don't think I understood how much I had been holding myself back. In Israel, young men must serve for at least two years in the military alongside similarly obligated women, including in Krav Maga, their close quarters combatives system. These men serve with and under women, and when they leave to return to the civilian world, they take the experience with them, changing and influencing their society for the better because of it. As a man, I am amazed by women like my grandmother, who survived World War II in spite of her own countrymen's attempts to murder her family. I am similarly humbled by my friend Denevera, who served as a scout sniper in the IDF, and I was constantly scared for fellow soldiers who are women when I served in the U.S. military, not just because in their limited support roles they would see combat regardless of the lower level of training afforded to them, but because of the intense hatred that so many of their predominantly male counterparts held toward them. 
with a rape epidemic in the United States military, it takes a special kind of courage to not only fight your country's enemies, but also to put yourself in the hideous position to be betrayed by your own comrades. It is the kind of courage that only other women can truly understand. I feel there is no greater evil than that kind of betrayal. The betrayal of those who are supposed to watch out for you, your comrades. And yet these women do it and risk it. I will not speak for the Israeli or Soviet armies, but in the case of my first-hand experience in the U.S. military, the women risk their own good names and careers, along with their bodies and minds, in service to their country, while simultaneously having to guard their backs against their own battle buddies. At the same token, men like the ones who inspire me with their hate to make this compilation will jeer that women aren't doing enough, while other men and women will jeer that they put themselves in those positions. I can only marvel at the history and bravery of women worldwide.